Corsi here. In this question, we're asked to express 2 cos x minus 3 sin x in this particular form. So let's go ahead and attempt to do that. We're requiring 2 cos x minus 3 sin x to be written in the form k cos x plus a. Now we can expand cosine of x plus a. We get cos x cos a minus sine x sine a. And that's all to be multiplied by k. So each of these two terms gets multiplied by k. And since these two terms, these two sides of the equation have to be equal, let's look at what's multiplying cosine of x. We've got 2 times cos x. On the right hand side, what's multiplying cos x is k cos a. We could certainly say that these two coefficients must be equal. k cos a must be 2, otherwise these two expressions would not be the same. Let's do the same for sine x. Well, there's a negative in both of these, so let's just choose the 3. The negatives match. And what's multiplying sine x on the right-hand side is k sine a. So, again, we can say that what's in the green circles would have to be equal. So let's do that. Let's write that down. k cos a is equal to 2. k sin a is equal to 3. So we have simultaneous equations and we have to find k and we have to find a. Now, to find the angle what we can do is divide the second equation by the first equation. And the reason we're doing this is because we know sine a over cos a gives us tan a. So these k's cancel. Sine a over cos a is tan a. We've now got to solve a trig equation, find an angle whose tangent is 3 over 2. But which quadrant are we in? Well, you'll notice that in this pair of equations, the cosine is positive. Remember, k is positive. So cosine of a is positive and sine of a is positive. And where does that happen in the grand scheme of things. Well, the cosine's positive, certainly in the first quadrant, and also in the fourth quadrant. The sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So that limits it to the first quadrant. It's only in the first quadrant that both sine and cosine are positive. So we know that A is in the first quadrant. So that certainly helps. What's the angle? It has a tangent of 3 over 2. And we're in degrees, remember. So my calculator here is in degrees, not rads, radians. So it's in degrees. And in my calculators, it's a tan. Yours will probably be tan to the minus 1. We're saying, what angle has a tangent of 3 divided by 2? 56.3. So angle A is approximately 56.3 degrees. And that's rounded to one decimal place. So that's progress. We've certainly found what the angle A is. Let's now try and find K. And the way we do this is 
We've already used sine over cos as tan. There's another basic trig formula, sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. And in that way we get rid of the a by squaring both of these equations and adding. So let's do that. We'll take the left-hand side of the second equation and square it. Add the left-hand side of the first equation and square it. And that obviously gives us 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. Now when we get round to it, this gives us k squared sine squared a plus k squared cos squared a being 13. And there's a common factor of k squared, and we're left with sine squared a plus cos squared a, which we know is 1. So k, since k is positive, k must be the positive square root of 13. We don't include negative root 13 because k, we're told, is positive. So we have to express 2 cos x minus 3 sin x in the form k cos x plus a. We now know k is root 13 and a is 56.3. And the accuracy is to one decimal place. So that's us completed part A. So let's move on now and have a look at part B. We're asked to therefore, hence, means we use the result we've got from part A, hence solve this equation. So the equation we're asked to solve involves on the left-hand side the expression that we've changed or written in a new form. So let's use our answer, which is root 13 cosine of x plus 56.3. We're asked to solve when is that equal to 3. And if we divide both sides by root 13, we're trying to solve the cosine of an angle. The angle happens to be 56.3 x plus 56.3. Cosine of an angle is 3 over root 13. So the cosine positive. Now that happens in the first and the fourth quadrants. So let's write that down. That the angle it happens to be x plus 56.3 degrees. And that angle must be in the first or the fourth quadrants. So, let's try and find that angle. x plus 56.3 must be equal to... Now, first quadrant, the angle whose cosine is 3 over root 13. Again, let's go back to our calculator. The angle whose cosine is, in your calculator, it could be cos to the minus 1. Use that. The angle whose cosine is 3 over root 13, 3 divided by root, square root of 13. And make sure you have 3 over square root of 13 in your calculator in brackets. Otherwise, things might well go wrong. So what is that equal to? 33.69. Rounded to one decimal place by 33.7. So 33.7. 33.7. Or, that's just the first quadrant possibility. Remember in the fourth quadrant, we go all the way around to 360 and subtract the first quadrant angle. So that would be 360 minus 33.7. So x plus 56.3 is equal to 33.7 or, and let's just not make mistakes here, 360 minus 33.7. That's 326.3. 
326.3. So to find x, we're going to take away 56.3 from each of these two values. And you'll notice something interesting happens here. We get a negative value. So let's just do that and then we'll decide what we're going to do with that. So 33.7, we're subtracting 56.3. And what does that give us? Minus 22.6. And that's not allowed because it's out with the range that we're allowed to consider. Or 326.3 and we subtract 56.3 from that. And that gives us 270. So what do we do with these two? Well, if we think about this, on a cosine graph, we have the cosine values repeating themselves every 360 degrees. So for x plus 56.3 to be 33.7, and then we get an x, being a negative 22.6 or a 270 value, there's another pair of values in the next cycle. We could go back to x plus 56.3 and add 360 to 33.7. That's in the next cycle along here. 360 added to this would be 393.7. 393.7. And we would be taking away 56.3 from 393.7. Let's try that. 393.7. And we're taking away 56.3 from that. Now, there we go. That's now a value for x that's within the required range. It's less than 360 and greater than 0. And there'll be others... The next one will be larger than 360. So which ones do we require? We only require these two. And we'd better say that. The only valid solutions for x, the only valid solutions are x equals 270 or 337.5. None of the others are valid. And remember, this is coming about because we've got the cosine of an angle being various values. And these two values that we get for x plus 56.3 will repeat in the next cycle of the cosine. So when we subtract 56.3, the, the first of the next cycle of values becomes relevant because that then gives us the value of x that is within the range that are required. So there's our two values for x, two valid solutions for x. That's Mr. Corsi signing out. Hope you enjoyed the video.